not working. Hello, good to see you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Have I told you lately we have great behind the scenes folks that make sure that things work as best they can. Um, Mike is on our sound, Jonathan's on video, and we're going to pray and hope that it all works like it needs to today because Mike went through and poked and pulled and twisted and wiggled every wire to see if he could get what happened last week to repeat, and guess what? It didn't. Aren't, don't you love what we call intermittent problems? <laughs> Which means that it'll only happen when you're least wanting it to. So, all that to say, I'm grateful for their uh, work behind the scenes to help us stay connected both in person and online. Uh, if something goes sideways, I promise you, there's a lot of activity trying to fix it in the back of the room, uh, including some looks for me to go, what do you need me to do uh, from up front? As we gather today, uh, I am grateful for um, Baptism of the Lord Sunday. Um, today, what we will do as we gather is remember our baptisms. Uh, and so if you're participating from home online, I would invite you to get a small bowl of water and fill it with water um, so that at that part of the service, uh, you can participate with us and feel the touch of water. So if you're sitting on your couch at home, um, I invite you to get up from said couch and go to the kitchen and get a little bowl of water so you can participate. Uh, also, if you are participating in worship today as we do the renewal of baptism, that's the reaffirmation of our baptismal uh, covenant that's made within the United Methodist Church and you've never been baptized before, let this be an invitation. Come, receive that small gift. When you hear the words, remember you're baptized and give thanks. Uh, you connect with me afterwards. If that's not something that's been your experience, I'd love to talk with you. Um, we believe baptism to be something that's celebratory within the United Methodist Church. And then when I preach today, you'll hear a little bit more about baptism from our tradition. Um, but it's a sign of what God is doing. So I need you to hear this very clearly. And I hope to reaff reaffirm it over and over um, that baptism we respond to it, but baptism, at least the act of baptism, is God's work in us. Can you hear that? This is God's work in us. Um, now, in some traditions, it's about your response, and every time you join said church or feel a movement of the Spirit, they expect you to go running down and get dunked. That is not our tradition. <laughs> um, so I recognize that we're going to need to speak about that a little bit today, and so I'll go into some depth around that. But, but one of the core foundational things for us is that baptism is God's work in us. And so we, we respond to God's work in us through that, uh, through our reaffirmation that you'll hear today. But that's a celebration. Amen? Amen. Uh, so with that being said, hear that invitation and I'll offer it again in worship that if you have not experienced baptism uh, and would like to talk with me about it, I'd love to sit down and have conversation um, because it is a beautiful thing. As we gather today for worship, uh, one of our pausing moments that we do each Sunday is we light the Paschal candle, um, the Christ candle that reminds us of Christ's presence among us. Um, through the Advent season, we slowly lit the Advent candle preparing for Christ's coming. And so that Christ candle we light this day, mindful of God's presence among us. But before we light it today, I did want to highlight some connecting points for faith formation for this spring, winter slash spring. It doesn't necessarily feel like spring today. Uh, Rachel Hagwood, who is on our intentional discipleship team, is going to give a quick witness about some upcoming opportunities that might spark your heart and mind to be uh, active. Good morning. Um, so Brian said he's going to speak a little bit this morning during uh, his sermon and worship about what it is we believe about baptism. Um, if that piques your interest and you're curious what we believe as United Methodists about lots of things, um, then I wanted to share with you a class that is going to be offered beginning January 22nd. It'll be a five-week course on Sunday mornings at 9.15. We'll meet in the small fellowship hall, and we're going to look at what it is, what it means to be United Methodist. Um, you may have seen, um, if you're engaged in social media with any United Methodist entities, um, that kind of tagline, hashtag BUMC. There's a lot of conversation in our world right now or in, within the Methodist Church about what it means to be United Methodist. And so as a church, we're going to take time to talk through what it is we, we believe, what makes us unique. Um, 
where do we stand in the world and how do we respond to our faith as United Methodists? So I hope you will consider joining that class again, January 22nd through February 19th. That will take us to the beginning of Lent. Can you believe it? Um, and then we will turn to a Lenten series um, where we'll be looking at the grace of Les Miserables. If you're familiar with that musical, which is actually showing at TPAC this week. Um, so we're gonna take that kind of timely presence in our community in Nashville and help that launch us into an exploration of that story, of the musical itself, um, and think about what it looks like when grace and justice collide with one another. Um, so those are two opportunities you'll have over the next several months to engage in a faith formation opportunity. And the Intentional Discipleship Team is working to develop and create these opportunities for people to grow in their faith, learn with one another, and build community. And so I hope you'll take the opportunity to participate in one of those. Thank you, Rachel. Um, so we're trying to find ways to continue to, to develop and connect as a people of faith, uh, both individually and communally. With that being said, I'm going to invite you, uh, much has been our practice, to take in a deep breath slow down. If you have your list in your hand of things that need to be accomplished, it's okay to finish writing it out and then set it down and let it be. Let's be present with one another and with God uh, as we light our Christ candle and prepare our hearts and minds for worship this day. Um, to my left, I will celebrate and lift up that you will see two persons helping lead worship today in, in spoken word. Um, that is Reverend, Margaret, Reverend Dr. Margaret Ann Crane, who is going to be assisting me today, who is a deacon in the United Methodist Church and also Diane Winkler is our song leader today, and I'm grateful for her willingness to help in this interim season uh, as we shift. And of course, you see Rachel and I who are here to help as well. So uh, with that said, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship this day.
morning. I invite you to join me in the call to worship, and your response is, God has shown God's self to us. The Father's voice bears witness to the Son. God has shown God's self to us. The Son bows his head beneath the waters of the Jordan. God has shown God's self to us. Christ submits to John's baptism and frees us from bondage. God has shown God's self to us. God's love is seen to the end of the world. God has shown God's self to us. If you will, let's rise as we sing our first hymn this morning, When Jesus Came to Jordan, the first and the second verse. I invite you to remain standing for the gospel lesson that comes to us from Matthew chapter 3, beginning in verse 13, the baptism of Jesus. At that time, now what that refers to is the time when John was baptizing in the Jordan. Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River so that John would baptize him. John tried to stop him and said, I need to be baptized by you, yet you come to me. Jesus answered, Allow me to be baptized now. This is necessary to fulfill all righteousness. So John agreed to baptize Jesus. When Jesus was baptized, he immediately came up out of the water. Heaven was open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and resting on him. A voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I dearly love. I find happiness in him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated as our children come forward to meet with Reverend Jack here at the altar chancel area. Does anybody know what this is called? Well, there's a cloth. There's a shell. Good. So we can hear on uh, both here and at home. This is called a baptismal font. And what's this on top of it? It's a shell. And it's put there today because we're going to talk about renewal of baptism. And now, what's this? It's water, and it's a pitcher of water. Guess what? Where do you use water at home? 
Oh, you use, that's baptism. Yeah, you use water on people's heads. Where else do you use water at home? To drink it. Yeah, to wash hands, to wash dishes, to wash clothes, to wash yourselves. Do you ever do that? Where else do you use water? When you play? Oh, when you water plants. When, when you drink water, it refreshes you. One second. When you drink water, it refreshes you. When you water plants, it gives them new life, right? When you wash your hands or your dishes or yourselves, it makes you clean. And what else? You, you, you fill up a bathtub and you wash yourselves. Now watch what I'm going to do. You can watch. Do you hear it? It's full of water. Now, now listen as I do this. What does it do? It makes noise. Brian, save the table. Yeah. <laughs> It makes noise. Water is something we drink. Water is something that we give to plants to renew them. Water is something that we wash dishes with and we wash ourselves to cleanse them. There are a lot of meanings for water. <laughs> That's true, too. Yeah. We use water to baptize people, and we remember all of those things. When they do the renewal of baptism today, remember cleansing, renewing, connecting, bringing everybody together, and refreshing. Can we join in a prayer? Holy God, we thank you for water. Water gives us new life. Holy God, we thank you for your gift of baptism in our lives. Amen. Come on back up for the renewal of baptism today. As you are able, let's rise again to sing the first and the second verse of My Hope is Built.
Please be seated. It's going to be that kind of day. I can feel it in my bones. <laughs> I'm just going to move things away from my arm span. Let us pray together. Pray with me and apparently for me as we gather. Loving and gracious God, we give thanks for the gift of your presence among us this day. Grant that we may know your grace and your peace as we celebrate the gift of baptism and the stories of faith that draw us in to be connected to you, to one another, and to this journey that we share with one another. We thank you for your grace that is always sufficient. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. It is good to be among you today as we gather on this Baptism of the Lord Sunday. In preparing to be with you today, I realized I probably should have gone back because this time last year, I was homesick. And I realized when I went back to look at our notes that I went, why is Debbie's name on everything? Oh, yeah, I missed that day. <laughs> This is one of my favorite Sundays in the liturgical calendar, in part because we pause. And I love the excitement of our kids when we pause and we gather around this shell, which has been a part of this congregation's life for many years. Uh, Ann Reed's husband brought that back from a United Methodist event, and it lived in their back deck for years, and it was brought to the church to be used as a part of this and I realized part of the reason we don't leave it out often is it's quite heavy. <laughs> and then I remembered part of the tradition over my last six to seven years with you has been helping Debbie move said shell into that place. But there is something connecting about place and time. The excitement of our kids circled around it. I realized for some of them this may be their first time or, or second at most where they have seen the shell or remember it. And within it, the very sign of water that we pour, the same water that we pour every time we baptize a child, a young person, or an adult. You see, within the United Methodist Church, these are the words that we say and that you'll hear again today. Through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We're incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this, all this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism. We acknowledge what God is doing for us and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. Baptism of the Lord Sunday is a renewing Sunday. And I love that it falls near the beginning of the, the uh, calendar within our larger society in January because this is a time when we're thinking about how we might renew certain practices in our life. This morning, I met with a small group of persons in the chapel to talk about what spiritual practices drew them into their connection to God that helped them grow in their own faith formation. We talked about prayer and meditation. We talked about the struggle to fast. Um, we talked about giving as a part of those disciplines that draw us into our faith. Each and every one of those practices that we named from exercise across the, the span of those were all ways that we found we connected to our body, to God, to others. So on this Baptism of the Lord Sunday, we have a symbol, a sign, that is among the most connecting of signs for us, water. We needed to drink. We needed to bathe. As, as Jack reminded our children, uh, I want you to remember these words. It cleanses us. It renews us. It connects us. Water has that kind of power. This community knows that deeply because in 2010, water came rushing through this community and it also caused chaos and destruction. But immediately following it, this very site became ground zero of sorts for response. The choir room, which would normally be filled with seats and people, was filled with flood buckets from the back of the room to the front. I wasn't here among you, but I heard you describe how the piles of carpet and insulation and drywall and furniture lined the streets. We knew the power of water to both bring life, but in that moment, you also saw its power when it came rushing into homes and destroyed them. But I would argue the greater power that was, 
that came after was the response of the community. Of the folks who showed up to help, um, not only those evacuate their homes, but help showed up to tear out the drywall that was wet to bring about some sense of recovery. I know it wasn't perfect for every person, and honestly, there are some for whom I recognize every time they forecast flooding, I feel the anxiety within our community rise just a little. And I have been here in my time and watched Old Harding Pike, the road that our church is on, been flooded over three times, including one time where a fire engine was sitting off the road to the side. Water has that tension within us, but it's something that all of us know and touch. We find ourselves near and around it on a regular basis, whether it's a rainy day or we're simply washing our hands, which we all got hopefully much better at during the pandemic. Some of you are laughing, which makes me concerned that maybe it's a practice you need to work on still. <laughs> the signs are still located in our bathroom that invite you to sing Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow or to sing the alphabet. The alphabet is what's shouted out from the bathroom at our house still, which is a really good indicator of whether Charlotte actually used soap and stayed long enough. I'm so thankful she's learned the alphabet. All that to say, water is a gift to us, but it points to the one who is the giver. You see, baptism is about God. It's about God's promise to us. And as we come to be a part of the church, baptism is that connecting piece. That word we heard was initiated into Christ's holy church. We're incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation. And as we read and we pray the baptismal liturgy, we connect from the stories of Noah and the, the flood to the escape from Egypt through the, through the, as they cross through and in Jesus, both in the water of a womb of Mary, but also in his very baptism that we read aloud today. God has been present throughout human history, shaping, renewing, cleansing, connecting. And so on Baptism of the Lord Sunday, we are invited to pause, to pause and reflect on how God has been active in our lives. I have come to believe that one of the practices we most are losing in our consumer culture is the act of reflection. You see, oftentimes we want immediate response, but reflection isn't an immediate kind of thing. It takes some work. Amen? It takes some time. And because we're running from one thing to the next, we don't make much of a practice of reflection. But spend any time with a teacher who has taught not only kindergarten, but older adults, and they'll tell you the greatest growth often happens not in the moment, but in the reflection upon it. I'm among those who did not grow up in the church, and so I remember my baptism. I was 15. I had not grown up in the church, had not heard the stories of faith, so most of my early Sunday school year experiences were really kind of dis discombobulating. There's a fun word for you. They were confusing. Uh, they didn't make a lot of sense. I didn't know the characters of the Bible. Um, and so when they would talk about them, and the Sunday school teacher, who was the pastor's wife, was super kind, she recognized my confusion. I'm sure it showed on my face. I don't have a very good poker face. <clears throat> And so she would sometimes take extra time to help me connect to the characters. Now, it didn't help that she had a love of the Old Testament, which is about the least connecting of ways to invite somebody to learn the characters of the Bible, because there's more syllables than there are names sometimes. But through those early experiences, I found the grace of Jesus through a people who love me. I've told you some of these stories over the years of being a part of a church with a Miss Cleo Barnes, who in her 90s and osteoporosis, I would help walk to her seat. She showed me what it looked like to have somebody love you without condition. Because she was proud of me, and she didn't know near enough about me, and she didn't need to. She didn't need to, because for her, I was a child of God, and she regularly reminded of that. She reminded me of that. When my name made it to honor roll in the newspaper, she clipped it out and brought it and said, I'm so proud of the work you're doing. I'm grateful for people like her who took time to learn my name, who embraced my arm because she needed it. She couldn't get to the seat that she sat in without assistance. 
And I'm thankful for J.J. Butterworth, who was our number one usher, always had a mint in his pocket to hand you or, or uh, a caramel. <clears throat> you could choose. Um, but here's the thing. J.J. was the one that asked me to help Miss Cleo. It was J.J. who saw an opportunity for an angry young teenager to have some purpose when he showed up to church on a Sunday. He thought, there's a helpful young man. I'm going to have him walk out and Miss Cleo. And she would pull in the one handicapped spot right next to the front door where she would hit the sign every Sunday. <laughs> we, we put the sign back up every single week. It was the only place to which she drove for which all of us were very grateful. <clears throat> But you see, I didn't realize when I was baptized at Whiteside United Methodist Church that God was really at work in me through those saints. They weren't perfect examples, but they were present examples. They offered the very best of who they were in those moments. J.J. was the one that drove me to buy my first suit ever at 15 because he said, God's going to do something in your life, and you're going to need this. I preached the first sermon that I had ever lifted up from that pulpit in that congregation. Nervous as all get out with more highlighter on the page than you can really put. Because I was anxious that I wanted to offer encouragement to the people and I didn't know much about my own faith. Therefore, didn't really feel all that equipped to help people who I saw sitting out there who had lived 70 and 80 and 90 years as people of faith. What could I offer? Well, what I offered them was the importance of passing on the faith to the next generation. Every time we gather around a baptismal font with children and their amazement, it lit up this morning. Did you see how they tried to climb over my little table? They wanted to see what was happening. They wanted to know why were we using these glass beads? Why does water matter that much for us as a people of faith? And in those moments, I'm super grateful for our Sunday school teachers who are trying to teach them the stories. I'm mindful how each and every one of you at different points will cheer them on and give them a high five before or after worship. I'm grateful for the witness of faith that happens through music on any given Sunday, through the witness of stories that we lift up, not just from the preacher, but from lay leaders within our congregation. Because in each and every one of those moments, they're drawn back to a moment where we recognize what draws us and connects us together is God's grace that we celebrate in and through the sacrament of baptism. Our faith is drawn together because of God's spirit at work in us throughout time and space, from one generation to the next. And it doesn't happen in mighty and overwhelming moments, but in a lot of little small moments piled on top of one another. Maybe as small as a glass bead handed to you that tells you to remember your baptism and give thanks. Remember that God's promise and love for you continues on. Remember that you are God's child. I didn't realize until I reflected much later in my adult life how much the grace of Jesus Christ was reflected through Miss Cleo Barnes. Because every week she disarmed the anger that I felt at the world of which I was seeing as a teenager. You see, Cleo didn't know that I grew up in a broken family that suffered from alcoholism. She didn't know that I was really resistant to let anybody into my life, and yet she opened herself to me. And slowly but surely, she brought healing to a young man that needed it. And it would be only in my 20s and 30s, long after her death, that I would come to realize just how much it meant to me. And so I continue to tell her story because she was simply living out her faith with the feeble body that, God, that she had left she still offered it with everything she could. And she broke through to a teenager who didn't think anybody cared. And she reminded me, I care. And not only do I care, did you know this person cares? And she would invite me to see the world differently. I give thanks for God's grace that worked through Miss Cleo on a regular basis. Because of her, I had a chance for the seed of God's grace to start growing a little. And wouldn't you know it, that a feeble 90-something-year-old with osteoporosis would be the strongest person I would meet in my teenage years. Today, we're going to reaffirm our faith together. 
We're going to come and receive a small glass bead where you will be told by Margaret Ann or I, remember your baptism and give thanks. Diane will invite you to sing, and maybe some of those songs will connect to you, um, and a word will emerge for you. Maybe as you come to pray and give thanks, the face of somebody who showed you faith through their life will emerge. Pause. Give thanks for them. Invite God to not only, give, not only invite thanks for their life, but maybe invite God to imagine how you are that person to somebody else. Whether it's at one of the kids within our congregation, I promise you, my daughter knows many of your names. Um, she's grateful for that. This community has loved on her in ways that I just simply don't have words some days. Um, she loves being a part of the church, sometimes more than the preacher. <laughs> she just loves being a part of the church. It is a place that she feels safe, that she knows that she is loved, and I'm so grateful for that. When you give thanks and remember that person in your life, ask God to help you see how you might be that person and in others, how God's grace is at work in your life to be shared, not just to be held on to. I'm grateful for this gift that we share together. Baptism not only is our initiation into the church, but as we reaffirm it each time, it reconnects us to the covenant of God's love that continues to transform our lives. You see, part of the benefit of United Methodism is that baptism, while we baptize children and young people when they're really small, we continue to come back to the font and remember it because God's work does not finish with us in that moment. It continues on throughout our life, throughout our years. So whether you're the youngest person sitting here today or the oldest, God is still at work in you. And for that, I give thanks. May we receive God's grace this day as we affirm, reaffirm our faith together. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please remain seated as we sing the last two verses of My Hope is Built. I would invite you to join with me in prayer. Let us pray. When we baptize ourselves in the frigid waters of fear, you come to gather us up, drying us off with grace, wrapping us in the warm, fluffy towel of the Spirit. When our faith becomes as threadbare as the carpet beneath our feet, you come, your work boots on, your tool belt around your waist, building a new foundation for us, whistling, my hope is built on nothing less. When we worry that someone else has taken our place in your heart, you show us where our name is etched, so you can always feel us with every beat. God in community, holy in one, we lift our prayers of joy to you, even as we pray together, saying the prayer that Jesus taught us. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we have gathered this day, one of our practices is to return to God, uh, not only God's tithes, but to imagine how our very heart, our lives, our hands, our feet are being used um, for the sake of God's grace and love, to offer our very lives. This morning, in conversation with our faith formation class around prayer, I said part of the, cha- part of the gift of tithing is it's a constant reminder to me that I'm not the owner of everything in this world, but simply the one who manages, who cares for it, a caretaker. That's been pretty radical, and it's not perfect. Some days it's a real struggle to recognize that I'm not the owner of everything in this world, but I'm meant to be a caretaker, entrusted with the things that I have to return them. And so today I'm grateful for the generosity of presence of our Sunday school teachers. Sure, when we give on Sunday morning, maybe you don't recognize the work that happens uh, among behind the scenes with a a Sunday school teacher for children or for youth or for adults. But they are laboring behind the scenes week in and week out to prepare conversations and lessons, to think of the questions they'll ask, uh, to invite persons of faith to continue on their journey of faith. And your giving helps make sure we have curriculum, that we have supplies, that we have a space where those conversations can happen. So I give thanks today for the gift of Sunday school teachers who are trying to teach and offer their very best so that whether it's the youngest among us or the oldest, the story of faith is being read aloud and told again as we imagine what it means to be a people of faith. And so this morning as we receive that gift, I'm grateful for Diane's leadership and she's going to offer our offertory. Um, You will not see a a plate passing down the pew. That didn't mean we lost them, uh, though there have been some times we thought we did. We have placed it in the Welcome Center where you can leave your attendance card as well as your gifts. You can also give online, and I'm grateful for that. And so let us now prepare our hearts and minds for how we might give God's tithes, but also offer our hands and our heart and our very lives. Good morning. I will confess to you that I am a lot more comfortable talking to you than I am singing soprano. So please forgive this alto for trying to hit those soprano notes today. (laughs) I think I must be channeling Debbie Tyree today because in choir practice, when Debbie brought a piece of music to us, she would always try to tell us some fact or some antidote or something that would connect us to the music as we learned it. So I today am going to share with you what has connected me to Love Lifted Me, one of my favorite old hymns. I was raised in a church-going family every Sunday. My parents were both big workers in the church. I had two older sisters that I really looked up to. It was happy. Life was good until it wasn't. Between the age of three and four, my parents divorced. That changed my world forever, even to today. And I'm not going to tell you how many years it's been. It's none of your business. <laughs> what that did was it created a very needy, a very insecure little girl. My mom had a very strong faith. And 
her, she had two number, one, two number one priorities. The first was, how was she going to take care of this family? She'd never worked outside the home, so that was a challenge. The other number one priority was for her is that every Sunday, she and her girls would be in Sunday school and church. Sunday school and church. No excuses, no distractions. Unless you were sick, you got to stay home. But every Sunday. And like you think Charlotte or like you felt, the church was where I found safety and reassurance, and I felt unconditional love. I went to those Sunday school classes for years, and over the years, I heard all of the Bible stories, talked about the scripture, and eventually, it dawned on me that there was a theme to all of this, and it was really quite simple. The theme was that God loved me, not just God loves me, but God loved me. So I would go into church and I would sing all the old hymns. I just love them, like a lot of us do. And I would hear, love lifted me. And it made me feel worthy. It made me feel important to whoever was telling me that. And I knew then that I was really important to God. Let me share that with you. This is what I heard. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, oh, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, oh, Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Souls in danger, look above, Jesus completely saves, he will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. He your savior wants to be. Be saved today. Join me. Love lifted me. Oh, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me. Lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Would you join me in prayer? God of new beginnings, as we move into this new year, 
stir in us the feelings of expectations, kindle our hearts and minds to see possibilities for our world and for your kingdom. Help us to believe that the world we have can be better, more loving, more just, more compassionate, and looking much more like the world you've imagined for us. Lord, help us to give generously this day to empower that to happen. In the name of Christ, Savior and Redeemer, we pray. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Let's see if this is going to work. Hey! Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church? which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? I I will. will. I invite you to rise as you are able as we join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Let us stand. I believe in God, the Father Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and and sitteth sitteth at the the right right hand of God the Father Father Almighty. From From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of the sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your Spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it. 
to wash away their sin and clothe them in, right, clothe them in righteousness. And throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in your final victory. All praises of you, you eternal, eternal God, Father, through your, your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, who with you and, and the Holy Spirit, Spirit lives and, and reigns, reigns forever. forever. Amen. You are invited to come forward and experience this reminder, this reaffirmation, uh, the gift of water. You'll come forward, and as you do, you'll receive a, a small glass bead. We'll just have the two stations, so if you're on one of the sides, we'll just invite you to come around um, to be a part as well. Um, as you come and receive this, you'll hear these words, remember you are baptized and be thankful. If you've not been baptized again, I'll remind you, you can still receive this gift of grace, uh, and if you simply want to let me know, we'll just pray a blessing, and we can have conversation in the coming days. Know that this... This space here is an invitation to experience God's grace. After you receive it, you are welcome to pray for a few moments at the altar. Take your time. Um, This is a moment for us to reflect upon God's grace for us. I'm grateful for your presence this day. Let us gather now at this baptismal font.
And now let us pray together the prayer that you'll find in the bulletin. For the faith and family into which we were baptized and for which we are daily gaining a deeper understanding, renew our commitment, O God, to reject what is sinful and to evermore embrace the freedom of new life that Christ gives. Renew our courage, O God to follow Jesus as Lord and to rely on Christ as Savior, renew our trust, O God, to commit to discipleship by showing compassion and justice and making the ministry and life of Christ our own, renew our strength, O God, to be faithful members of your beloved community in learning, service, and celebration, renew our bonds, O God. If you will, let's rise and join our voices in singing the final two, uh, or the final one verse of When Jesus Came to Jordan. After we baptize a child, we invite the family to gather around them, and we say these words, the Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Christ. And so today, as you've reaffirmed your baptism, I'll pray that same prayer for you. May the Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. May you be a sign of God's love as you go forth this day, knowing that you are deeply loved. And it's a deep love, as Diane sang, that will lift you up. So whatever you might need to bring to God this day, may you have been encouraged in your journey of discipleship, and may you go forth to love God and neighbor this week. Thanks be to God.